Hello everybody. Welcome to another riveting edition of Panini Unwrapped. I'm Tracy Ackler, joined today by special guest, the legendary Sean Landetta. Two all-decade teams, two Super Bowl rings, 20 years of punting professionally, Giants, Eagles, USFL, Tampa Bay. Yeah, a few others. <laughs> now, Sean, first of all, thanks for joining us. No, nice to be here with you. Now, we're, we're here at the Pop Warner Super Bowl, and, and you've been playing a pivotal role in some of the championship games out there. Can I talk about what you know with Pop Warner this week? Well, I think Pop Warner is a great organization. I've worked with them uh, in the past, and we talked about getting me down here for the Super Bowl, and it's really been great to interact with all the kids and teams from all over the country and to be involved in the games and signings and everyone else and everything else. And, you know, just for the kids to get a chance to, you know, mingle and talk to a player and, uh, you know, I brought my rings with me, you know, telling them, hey, you guys are in the Super Bowl, I was too, and it's really been a good week. Well, it's, we're, it's been fun to watch and, and watch the games. And we brought a box of, of 2010 Panini Classics, which we thought was an appropriate box to, to break with you because you're a classic yourself. And uh, I just wanted to open a few packs and talk about what's inside and go from there because a lot of these guys you may have played with. And... Well, I tell you what, you know, a lot of times uh, I, I've been asked as a player through the years, you know, what's your best moment? Obviously, when you finally make it as a pro, that is your best moment. But I always tell people that probably a lot of players' second best moment that we all forget about uh -huh. is that day you get your first date football. Right. Because a lot of us as kids, we grew up, I did, you know, in Baltimore, Maryland, buying football cards of the, you know, all the teams and players, and we used to trade them, you know, all the things we right. used to do. And, uh, boy, you get a little bit older and, uh, you get a chance to play football and you get your own football card, that's really a big deal. So, uh, you know, me and a lot of other players have always been interested in football cards. Now, you, when you were growing up, you, you mentioned that you collected. Did, did you ever think that you would, I mean, you dreamed of being on your own football card, but did you ever think it would be possible? Well, no. I mean, that's one of those things that every kid dreams about it, but you're like, wow, you know, what are the chances that's going to happen to me? And, uh, you know, you, you find out about it when someone calls you and says, hey, I got your card. And, you know, you're so excited to see you on a football card. Uh, you know, again, if you grew up doing it, which I did, and, um, you know, every year they would come out, you'd always be interested to see your card. And, you know, like most people, you look at the picture and you're like, oh, that's a terrible picture <laughs> to me. But, um, you know, football cards are great. It's great to see, to see you guys are, you know, playing such a role and keeping them around. Absolutely. Now, now uh you obviously still keep up with the game, and and but for, for, for the longest time, punters haven't been instrumental in, in trading cards, and, and you're kind of one of the guys who was the exception to that rule because you have, I think, more than 80 different cards on the market. Yeah, I was lucky to have a lot of cards uh, when I played. I, I know, as you mentioned, you know, for the most part of this last decade, I played until 2006. Mm -hmm. and it seemed like my last four or five years I didn't get a card. And, you know, I think some of the companies were pulling back, uh, maybe issuing 15 cards per team, you know, going more with the uh, skill position players, the receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, and the bigger stars. So, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, get to a point where they'll spread it out and uh, have all the guys back on the cards again because. Uh, you know, everybody in the league certainly uh, looks forward to that, even if they don't tell you. That. Right. Yeah. Well, one of the things that probably wasn't as prevalent back back in the in your heyday that is now is the game worn memorabilia card. Yeah, I mean, I, I look at this and I just think this is so amazing. I mean, you know, Peyton Manning here, one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, to actually say you have a piece of his game worn uniform. That's uh, you know something thousands of people would love to have, and it's. You know, terrific thinking on your part to, you know, to do things like this because certainly with one of his game shirts, you can make a lot of these so that a lot of the fans can get them. Absolutely. And uh, you know, the presentation of this is great too. You can go and see something like this, and you say, "Why? Well, I wish they had done this, you know, a long time ago." But uh, it's great you guys are doing this. Pretty cool. And to your point, it's it's a way for us to share that history with a thousand folks, as opposed to that jersey being locked up in a in a collection somewhere no one ever gets to appreciate it. No, sure. I mean, I, you know, baseball cards, growing up, I was a baseball fan too, and, you know, every fall you got your football cards, and, uh, you know, they've really come around through the years, and, uh, you know, it's great you guys are in it because uh, that'll just help to continue keep it going and, uh, you know, keep the interest out there of, uh, 
you know, of, of getting cards. You guys now, got some great old ones here. As a, that's the 50th anniversary? Yeah, that's John that's great. Now, I'm sure you still keep up with your old team. Yeah, I sure do. So when you see a card of a guy like Eli Manning, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, my first thought is that, you know, the short time I spent there when we were teammates recently in 06, um, you know, how I think the world of him. He's such a competitor, uh, tries very hard, is a terrific player, and handles that pressure up there of being a quarterback as good as anybody can. Uh, you know, until he won the Super Bowl, the fans were a little hard on him, and, you know, he came through like a champ, and, uh, you know, he's revered up there now, which he should be. That's what he did. Yeah, he's terrific. Now, you obviously have two Super Bowl rings on there. You've got one from, from Super Bowl 21. 21. And one from Super Bowl 25. Correct. Um, obviously, I'm assuming the first one is the most meaningful? Yeah, you know, it is. I mean, the first one, everything is so new. Your whole life, you grew up watching TV, watching the Super Bowl, and thinking like every other kid, wow, one day maybe I'll get a chance to do that. And, you know, then all of a sudden it happens, and everything that happens for the first time that's new is great. The second one was very rewarding because it was a game no one thought we could win. We were playing a, a Buffalo Bills team that was basically an all-star team, and right. still, I think, one of the greatest teams ever in NFL history. Um, you know, we did everything right, and we still barely won by a point. And, uh, you know, that was very rewarding because it was a total team effort and uh, a great win for our team. Now, in that, that game, obviously, a lot of people remember that for being the Scott Norwood wide right game as a special teams play that, that, that really decided the outcome of the game. What's, what's, uh, is there one special teams play that, that you made that stands out? I mean, you had more than 1,000 punts in your career. Yeah. But is there one that stands out? Probably the most important punt I ever had was uh, in that game with about two minutes left. Uh, they held us, and we had to punt. And, uh, you know, we were punting from around the 50 going in. And like any, I'm thinking, boy, if I can hit this inside the five, then I'm thinking, try not to get too cute, because if you kick in the end zone, it comes back to the 20. So, you know, I laid it up, and it was a fair catch just inside the 10. And, uh, you know, every once in a while I think, you know, maybe if you kick that ball in the end zone, three minutes later, Norwood's trying a 37 instead of a 47-yarder, yeah. and maybe he makes it. So looking back, that was probably the most important punt I hit, which at the time didn't seem like it because of the way Buffalo moved the ball. But uh, that, that, was, uh, that was a good one. Now here's a, a two gentlemen that you hopefully never had the had the uh, the misfortune of having them on your on your back there. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I played against both of these guys in the Pro Bowl. Okay. Uh, the thing that's neat about the Pro Bowl is guys that are stars. We're looking at Junior Seau and Derek Thomas that are starters. You know, in the Pro Bowl, these guys play on special right. teams because it's all all stars. And you know, I remember the guys I had blocking for me on my punt team. You know, Mike Singletary and all these guys. I'm like, wow. You know, the guys that are rushing are all-star, all-pros, and the guys that are protecting for me, uh, you know, that was kind of pretty cool. I had to make sure I paid attention to the snap. Right. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I got to know both of these guys. Unfortunately, we lost Derek, but uh, Junior right. Seau, what a player, played about 20 years in the league. Just terrific. Just like you. Now, one more thing that, that wasn't as prevalent back then as it is now is the certified autograph card and the pack of cards. And it's, wow. Look at that. Again, another way to, to bring f collectors and fans closer to their... I, I just think that's terrific. You know, again, just like having the, uh, you know, the game-worn piece of a shirt in there to actually get a card that's signed, uh, you know, by a player. And the way you have it here is so nice. You know, it's not messy and really adds to the card. Uh, another great idea. That's very cool. And then one more thing. You you played one season for the Buccaneers, which is pretty local here. We're in Orlando. And for your visit out here, we uh, – we had some some nice photographs made up, and Scott, I don't know if you can get that, but it's it's a unique piece because all, there aren't many trading cards, if any, that, that picture you with Tampa Bay. Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, I, I think uh, of all the years I played, there's just a few years I didn't have cards, and Tampa was one year that I didn't. So, you know, that's really great that you guys are able to print that up, and, uh, you know, maybe one day that'll show up in a, a football card somehow in some, some old release. Uh, I was just really glad that when I came to play for Tampa, it was the uh, first year of their new style of uniform. Right. Uh, you know, the old creamsicle uniform yeah, the was very color. bright, but I'm glad I got to wear this one a little bit better. Well, I'm glad you, you were on with us, man. Honored to have you on, Sean. I really appreciate it. No, thanks very much, and uh, great working with you guys. Thank you, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.